he certainly has a chance of winning. Uh, and I put this in the context, uh, look, Biden is way ahead in all the polls, but in some of the important states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, uh, Hillary Clinton was ahead more in those states at this time in 2016. So what does that mean? It's hard to tell in a conclusive way, but certainly Trump could win. I think there is this factor, uh, which you know in uh, British politics so well, and that is the, uh, are the voters personally committed to the candidate? Is there a sense that Biden is uh, energized the Democratic Party and his voters or potential voters? And I think there's some evidence that he is not. You've been covering American politics for many decades. What do you make of Mr. Trump, in essence, both as a man and as a president? Well, this is uh, the easier to describe the creation of the universe. I've done uh, two books on him. Uh, I, I guess the core is, in, in terms of what's going on now, uh, what literally three weeks before the election here, uh, people realize that he failed miserably in his duty to protect the country from the virus. He, as I disclosed, knew much earlier that it was going to be airborne, that it was going to be a problem in this country, and he failed on that score. It's been raised, the idea that he might just simply refuse to accept the result at that point. Do you think that's realistic? And would the Republican Party accept that kind of stance? President Trump has declared war on democracy. He has said, well, I'm not sure we're going to have a peaceful transition of power. Uh, the way the system works now, the votes will be counted for days or weeks after election day. So everything is, is up in the air. It is a nightmare for democracy. Mr. Woodward, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.